Hey folks, Captain Matt here, and uh, we're just excited tonight about sharing uh, some, well, all right, to sh uh, sharing one of my problems with you tonight. And we, you know, as we built this rack here, we did it to start breeding worms in a different way. I, I ran into a real problem. Worm castings are the best fertilizer on the planet and can revitalize soils that have been ravaged by chemical fertilizers. Captain Matt is not your average worm farmer. This year, he'll produce 10 tons of worm castings in his garage to sell in his local community. Matt wants to mentor you to help you achieve your worm goals. He doesn't throw big words or complicated information at you. He's a farmer with dirt under his fingernails. He'll teach you proven approaches that work. Subscribe now and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey. This winter has been a very busy winter, and I say that in a wonderful way. I'm having more fun working with the worms than I can tell you. But I'm doing a lot of stuff, and I, I sat down and tried to figure out what I'm doing. I'm, I mean, I've got the, the six bags going. We've got a CFT over here. I transformed, temporarily transformed these two CFTs into something else that we're going to talk to you about in a minute. We've got African night crawlers growing over here. We've got wheatgrass growing over there. Um, and, and the list goes on, things that I have got to get done during the day. And so I, I'm busy, but we're breeding, and I know, <clears throat> I know why I'm breeding. And I have some things in the work that I can't even talk about tonight. I was uh, doing an interview with some folks over in England this evening, and, and they're like, well, what is it that you're doing? I said, I can't tell you yet, but I need massive, massive amount of worms. So I had to decide what to do because... I know how to hatch cocoons in the bins, done it many, many times. But I'm dealing with, I would have to have three or four racks just like this filled with all these different bins to hatch them out um, so that we put the number of cocoons in a bin, they hatch out and we grow them out there. And, but that's not my, my issue. I need, I need massive amount of worms. They don't have to be, uh, uh, they don't have to be grown out. And so... What I thought, I decided I'm going to take these two CFTs and I'm going to turn them into nurseries. And so we, we emptied them out and we filtered everything out. We got our worms out. We got our, our castings out. And I put a piece of um, one, one thirty second of an inch sheet of, of plastic. Uh, a solid, rigid, what's it called, Mark? FP, piece of FRP. It's used oftentimes in construction. They're four by eight sheets. And I put one of those sheets on top of the, the, the pipes in the bins um, so that the babies wouldn't fall through. So we're producing right now a, a thousand cocoons in six bins. And every week I'm retrieving 6,000 uh, cocoons at least. I'm giving you a low number. I think they're more than that. And so we set these guys up for to make it a nursery. We put the plastic sheet down. Um, I put heat under both. I have a radiator under there and a radiator under here. I monitored, I put in some bedding, good, good base of bedding, and monitored the temperatures in there. Got the temperatures uh, somewhere between 82 and 76. Uh, in, the, in those bins. So nothing's higher and nothing's lower. And so we're now taking the cocoons and putting them inside the uh, CRTs, which are now nurseries. And we've been watching them and they're hatching and they're hatching beautifully. Multi a matter of fact, one of them, this bin here, the temperature got a little high and I rolled back the cover and the heat forced the baby worms up onto the plastic. And it, you know how water condenses on the plastic. There are over a hundred worms that couldn't have been two or three days old crawling around the plastic. They're hatching and it's a great thing. So from here on in, now I know what to do. Every week I'll take my six bins, I'll pull my adult uh, uh, breeders out and I simply take my the breeder bin, bring it out. I mix it with some peat moss to lighten it because it's very heavy soil where we're where we're breeding. I lighten it up and I slowly fluff it into these into these bins and now I know every week I can just do that and we are going to produce massive massive amount of worms with very little labor behind it too okay so let's take a look at what's going on in here um, 
the, the babies are so small right now, I don't think the camera would pick them up. But what I've done is <clears throat> I put some apples in, and uh, uh, there's a little baby over there, and there's a little baby, and there's a little baby. And I have some watermelon and, and different things. And so they're, they're hatching really well, and I'll watch them. I've sprinkled a little food on. Um, I, I sifted the food, and we put some very, very fine food in, some Bigger crumbles got in with it, but it looks like some of the finer food is also starting to be nibbled up. And uh, it's very, very exciting. And just to know that we have the temperature in these bins in order to just put the 6,000 cocoons in here and know we're going to have hatching cocoons without a whole bunch of concern and worry. And they'll eventually, these guys will be bulk bins is what they'll be. And it will be, you know, um, just you know, a bulk bin filled with, uh, you know, 50,000 worms or whatever it is when we get to that point. But it's exciting when you run into a problem. And I really, I lost some sleep over this because I was like, maybe I have to build a, uh, a few more racks. But all of a sudden this idea came and it really worked. And I just thought tonight we'd share it with you. It's, it's working and we'll give you an update another month or so from now. I'll give you an update and let you know. Just to give you one other update right now, I measured our bags. We have uh, 22 inches to go, which means in another um, 11 weeks, we are going to have these bags filled to capacity and ready for uh, use. And so that's the one ton bags. So before we close out, I just want to talk to you about a project that I've been working on now for over a year. And it's, it, it, and it's coming, it, it's getting so close to, to completion that I can actually speak about it tonight. And we are starting a Learn to Worm course. It is just so full. Uh, uh, you know, you'll open up the course and, and you'll read a paragraph. And after the paragraph, you'll get a video to visually explain it. Because some people learn by reading and some people learn by seeing. And so we're going to meet the needs of both people. We may have as many as 100 videos in this, um, in this course. And it, it's really, um, we're just very excited about it. I brought in three people to help me do it. I have a writer that after I write, because I'm, I'm somewhat illiterate and I admit it, but uh, I write it and then I hand it over to a professional writer to rewrite it. And we have... We have two other people that are, are working on it with us. It is just going to be a bang out. We're, we're not, we're not in, you've known me long enough to know it's not a, about money. We, we have some expenses that, we'll, that we're incurring for the course and we're gonna have to charge something for it, but it's gonna be very, very inexpensive. And we're gonna offer it two different ways. We're gonna offer you the course. If you would just like the course, you can pick it up, take the course all by yourself and do what you want with it or you'll be able to say, no, I want to take a step up course. It's the same course, but with that course, you get a group of people and you all take the course on your own, but you meet with a mentor online once a week and discuss the course and answer any questions whatsoever that you have because you're going to have questions. And uh, hopefully the course is going to be really clear, but it will be great. And we picked, we have a mentor coming out of Australia, a great wormer that we're so excited about. Two, two folks here in the state, a younger wormer that is someone that we're so impressed with that we immediately said, You're, would you please be one of our mentors? And then a, a, a very, a, a person that's been uh, in worming for over 20 years. So it's exciting. We're excited about it. And um, you'll be able to hear more about it on wormpeople.com. And don't forget, you know, the newsletter is out. Folks, just remember something. It is the joy of worming is uh, doing it with a community and sharing it with other people and sharing your information. I love one of the most professional people I know in the business told me I will share anything. People look at me all the time and say, why do you tell everybody how you do everything? They're going to find out how you do it. Uh, and she said this. All right. Her name was uh, Samantha Flowers. She said, I just love sharing everything with people. 
And because she has the heart of a warm people is what she does. And folks, let's be that type of people. Let's just share. You, you know, you could call Samantha tomorrow, ask her a question, and she'd just sit there and, and rattle the answer off to you. And it may even be one of the secrets to the trade in someone else's world. But Samantha, she understands. We just share things. We're not hiding anything. Nothing's in our back pocket. We just want to go forward as a community and see this world change in a great way. Okay, folks, that's it for tonight. Thank you so much. God bless you, and we'll see you real soon. Subscribe now and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey.